Today we're talking about how to cut down some screws. Hey guys, my name is Dave Tim. Thank you very much for checking out this video. Before we get rocking and rolling on how to shorten screws, first, please head on over to gunsandtactics.com and make sure you're following us on all of our social media outlets. Also, if you're not a subscriber, please hit that subscribe button, clang the bell so you get all the notifications. And as always, we do have our QA videos at the end of the month where we answer your questions and one lucky esker gets a cool prize. You can email your questions to the email address shown below. That is the QA at gunsandtactics.com where we answer your questions. So let's get rocking and rolling. Today we're talking about how to shorten some screws. Now, uh, I'm not going to get into the debate of bolt versus screw because sometimes it's simply just tomato tomato. But what we're talking about today is shortening screws. Now this particular one is a larger one, but uh, how the project came about was basically I had, let me zoom in so you guys can see this, uh, I had one of these screws and I needed basically to make another. Uh, so I took this bolt here or this machine screw, socket head cap screw, whatever you want to call it, and I'm going to need to shorten it to make a duplicate of this one. And uh, I was talking to somebody on the phone and they asked how I did that and I said, oh, it's easy to do. You can just cut it down and clean up the threads or whatever. And uh, they haven't heard of that before. So I figured it'd be a good time to do a video. Now, truth be told, you don't need a lathe or anything like that. You can do it with hand tools. You can, you know, cut it with a, a saw or a cutting wheel and then you can clean up the threads with just a file or something like that. Uh, I use a belt sander uh, or that is kind of the preferred tool for me. You will need a matching nut. So I, you know, probably like many of you like to keep kind of a hardware store on hand. So I keep all sorts of different uh, screws and nuts and, you know, different hardware, you know, basically in these bins on hand in my shop. So I don't always have to run in town to the hardware store. And with gunsmithing, uh, hardware stores don't carry those common, you know, screws. So like, 440, 640, 648, 840, those are fine screws and they're kind of tough to find. So I generally like to keep a lot of these on hand and generally when I buy them, I buy them long because I know I can always shorten them down. And what really, really is an absolute must is a screw block like this or for larger screws, the appropriate sized nut to match that. So what we're gonna do, first things first, figure out how long you need the screw and then you're gonna go ahead and take your Sharpie. You can use tape, you can use whatever, but I'm just gonna mark where I need to make my cut. Now, I like to generally mark a little bit taller because I can always shorten it, but you can't add material back. So then what I'm gonna do is I'm going to take a nut that matches that particular screw and go way, way, way past where I wanna make my cut. Now, another little tip, is if you don't want this nut to move, you can actually use two nuts and then kind of tighten them up on each other. Now that you have the nuts installed, the nuts kind of give you a couple of things. Number one, they give you a guide on where to make your cut. So you can use that as kind of your marker, your indicator, or whatever. Two, if you wanted to, you can use them to clamp onto with your vise. So depending on what kind of tool you were gonna use, you could very easily use the nuts as kind of your vise jaws, or excuse me, uh, your clamping fixture, if you will, for the screw, and you could go ahead and make your cut. You can also clamp onto, with the vice jaws, the portion of the threads that we're gonna discard. Obviously, this could damage the thread, so I only wanna make sure I'm, I'm cutting uh, past that, so I'm not gonna worry about those damaged threads. Now, as far as what you use to cut, you can use a saw, you can use a cutting wheel, you can use a side cutter, you can use a bolt cutter. It really doesn't matter for that rough cut just make sure you make your cut. Now for larger uh, screws and bolts, you're probably gonna use a saw and you're probably just gonna use one of the grooves as your cutting guide and that's gonna make an angled cut. Now, when you end up making your angled cut, then what you can do is you can go ahead and use that nut, put it in the vise, and that nut will help act as a guide so then you can file off the proud surface and make basically a nice, you know, smooth surface then you can go ahead and take that screw over to the belt sander, put a slight taper on it. After you put that nice taper on it, you can use the nut to go back and forth and kind of clean up those threads a little bit. Obviously, if you have a die, you could use that too, but 
Truth be told, using a good quality nut does the same thing. It cleans up the threads, it chases them a little bit, if you will, and then uh, you have a usable screw that looks and works just fine, as you can see on the video. Now, as far as our project here, let's go ahead and actually do this. What I'm gonna do is basically make a duplicate of this screw. So I've kind of marked where I need it to be, and I'm, like I said, I'm gonna make it a little bit tall, and I'm gonna go ahead and cut this. Now, you can use a saw, whatever, I'm just gonna use a cutting wheel in the interest of time, and obviously make sure you're wearing eye protection whenever you're using any type of power tools, whether there's metal shavings or you know even filing, your eyes don't grow back. So you can see here that the surface of the cut is not exactly good. It's kind of rough, it has a slight angle as you can see, but I can still loosen the nut over the threads, it kind of cleans those threads up a little bit, not that they were really damaged in this case, and I can definitely put the nut back on. So it is a usable fastener, and I could use this. However, in my opinion, it's really ugly, and I don't like that. Now, I could use the nut, and then put this in the vise, and then using this as a guide to make sure I'm even, take my file, and you know basically kind of clean that up a little bit. That's certainly one option. Otherwise, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna take it over to the grinder, and we're gonna clean this up so it looks basically like factory. Now using the belt sander, I'm also using the nut to make sure that my grind is basically perpendicular for the screw. So I have nice 90 degree cut, a grind if you will. Don't use a ton of pressure, just go light. Remember you can always take off more material but you can't add more back on. So I'm just making nice even cuts with the belt sander to shorten that screw a little bit. And if you find that the screw gets hot, don't be afraid to wear gloves or take a break. At the end, I'm actually gonna use the grinder to add just a slight taper. And I'm gonna do this by using light pressure and rotating the screw as I'm just lightly touching the belt sander to give it that nice factory look taper. So it's gonna, again, hopefully look like a factory made screw. Now, another tip with the screw block is, of course, you can use the screw block to identify screws. You can take a screw and put it in there and make sure it's the appropriate size. But we're also gonna use that to hold the screw while we're shortening it. This works great for shortening it with the belt sander, which is my preferred method, which these small you know, gunsmith type screws, I just basically take them right to the belt sander and shorten them to length. And then, if you've ever tried to use a pliers to hold a screw, you know that it just doesn't work well. It's one of those things that you learn early on that there has to be a better way, and that better way is for sure the screw block. So now we've wrapped up and we have our shortened screw. As you can see here, I made it just a hair taller than my uh, replacement screw, and that was actually by design, but it has a nice smooth cut. It has that nice taper to kind of make it match a factory looking screw. It has no problem engaging with threads. It, it works perfectly. This is a, a success. Now the test is, this is actually an action screw, so I'm obviously gonna test it in the final application before I go put everything together, and I'm just gonna line up the screw. And as you can see, the screw fits the action perfectly. This particular one is a socket head cap screw quarter 28 to match a Remington 700. So that is just how easy it is to shorten a screw. You can, again, certainly do it by hand with uh, files or things like that. I just prefer the belt sander. It makes short work of it. And if you really wanted to, you can very easily take some cold blue to the surface of the screw, and then it would make it look basically like a complete factory screw. Now, in my case, I'm actually gonna probably uh, bead blast this a little bit to try to match the finish of this stainless receiver but that's just how easy it is to shorten screws. So I hope you found this tip helpful. If you guys have any questions, don't be afraid to leave a comment below, or as always, email your questions to us for our monthly QA episode. I'll put the email address shown below, but that is the QA at gunsandtactics.com. Thank you guys very much for watching. Please subscribe if you haven't already. Make sure you get the notifications uh, so you get all of our newest content. Make sure you head on over to gunsandtactics.com for all of the things that we're doing related to guns and tactics. Thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.